Hi and welcome to a new Decred News Update. I'm your host Exodus and we have a lot to go over. Lots to talk about including development updates, new proposals on Politea, including ones to change the consensus rules, which are the most critical as they are the ones that change the underlying rules of the network and require an on-chain vote in order to be activated. Being able to adapt and improve the consensus code is exactly why Decred was created with its hybrid proof-of-work and proof-of-stake mining system. Now let's dive into development updates. Censored proposals can now be labeled properly and will have a description as to why they were censored. The user interface has been updated to warn users about losing their proposal draft if something goes wrong, as data is stored in the local browser, encouraging users to write it up somewhere offline before submitting it on Politea. Further Politea work is ongoing to add more proposal metadata, New proposal authors can specify a beginning and end date within the proposal, set their maximum budget, and choose an appropriate domain, such as marketing or development. Developer Caramble has created a WooCommerce plugin allowing for payments in Decred. A bare-bones Ethereum implementation has been added to the Decred DEX, as well as a sync status and fee rates. Mainnet use is currently disabled. Work is ongoing to replace the registration fee with Fidelity Bonds, where users lock funds to use the DCR DEX, but can redeem those funds after a certain period of time. A number of other bug fixes and other general updates have also been applied, such as handling attempts to register insufficient balances, salvaging swap refund transactions, and showing the current price in the browser window title. Upcoming Decred Graphical Wallet GoTCR has had a number of UI updates for the wallet, staking, and privacy pages as it nears closer to being finalized. A treasury expenditure policy bug has been discovered and needs a consensus change in order to be fixed. Payments from the new decentralized treasury are blocked for several months by a bug in expenditure policy implementation. The test treasury spend transactions mined on May 22nd triggered an overlooked condition in the safety mechanism protecting from spending too much DCR in a short period of time. For the next few months, only around 0.15 DCR can be spent from the new treasury, which is too low to pay contractors. Payments will continue in the meantime as normal via the legacy treasury system, which still has plenty of funds. There's already a draft decred change proposal to fix the treasury bug. A new consensus vote will be needed in order to implement these changes. A detailed blog post on decred.org thoroughly explains what happened and is a must read for those looking to dig deeper. Decred community member FST underscore NML announced a $100,000 bounty for building Decred integration with ThorChain. ThorChain is a decentralized cross-chain liquidity protocol. The development is already in progress by eager developers. DCRD, Decred's full node implementation, has updated the UTXO backend implementation to use level DB. This results in 10% faster initial blockchain download and 12% reduced memory storage. Decred has been given a USD pair on Bitfinex, and Bitcoin.com has listed Decred with BTC, ETH, and Tether pairs. We recently hit new all-time highs in staking participation and in the number of coins mixed. Let's take a look at network statistics. DCR data is the best way to comb through the Decred network stats. The ticket price, which is the cost of staking on the Decred protocol, has shot up to 319 Decred per ticket after falling to just 120 Decred per ticket. This is the highest ticket price ever in Decred history, even taking into account the old staking algorithm, which saw prices wildly fluctuate. Nearly 58% of Decred in circulation is currently being staked. We recently had a staking participation high of 59.7%. Remember the ticket pool size has a target of 40,960. If the number of tickets passes this number, the ticket price will adjust upwards accordingly. The pool is currently 3.55% over target, so the price will increase even higher. The current vote reward is 0.73 DCR per ticket voted. The Decred block reward decreases by 1% every 21 days as Decred is a deflationary cryptocurrency. Like with other proof-of-work coins that run on ASIC miners, the Decred hash rate had plummeted due to China kicking out their masses of miners, though it looks like miners are coming back online with the increase in hash rate. Those looking to buy mining hardware should be aware of scammers, faulty hardware, and other bad actors that have arisen due to this situation. If a deal looks too good to be true, it likely is. Because Decred uses a hybrid proof-of-stake proof-of-work mining system, majority attack needs not only majority hash rate, but also the majority stake. This means even with the dramatic drop in hash rate, the Decred chain is still incredibly secure against possible attacks. We can demonstrate this with the Decred attack calculator. At this point in time, an attack against the Decred chain is impossible due to the number of coins staked. There simply aren't enough coins to go around for a potential attacker to acquire, stake, and try to perform an attack. The treasury stands at over 700,000 DCR, worth $124 million as of this video. Coin supply is over 13 million, 
and the percentage of coins mixed is 48%, just shy of the 50% milestone. Now let's look at some community updates and media. Decred Society has released a number of new videos in this fundamental series, including cost to attack, privacy, and distribution. It's not really fair for me to compare Decred's cost of attack against a pure proof of work chain, as Decred is built on a hybrid system of proof of work and proof of stake. But because of these developments, it's likely that Decred will be in the realms of 20 times more secure than a system with a similar hash rate and price per coin. Currently, Decred's hash power is only 210 petahashes, but the cost of attack is just short of $1 billion per hour. And as Decred has a current market cap of just over $1 billion, it makes this attack completely pointless. So the next question is, what happens if an attack is successful? If an attack is successful, this would cause the blockchain to start following a new block path and continue down that path until the attack is stopped or the hash power gets redistributed. This is due to the blockchain protocol having a built-in feature that determines the longest chain as being the true chain. If a miner had more than 51% of the hash power, they can build blocks faster, causing them to have the longest chain. Blockchains need wide distribution to prevent this kind of attack happening. The consequences of any of these kinds of attacks is that the participants can lose a lot of money. And the longer the attack goes on for, the more serious this becomes. Decred's core developers witnessed how destructive it can be to rely on external funding or venture capital. The three main concerns here are one, the funders tend to push the project in a direction that doesn't align with the intended goals. Two, VC funding normally has short-term goals that yield high returns initially, but compromise the project in the long term. Short-term goals rarely have a good outcome for the long-term success of a project. The compromises made during this time can destroy the overall sentiment from which a project may never recover. And then finally, once the profits have been made and extracted, the capital normally disappears, leaving the project in a chaotic state and more often than not without coherent direction or leadership. Decred has preserved its treasury to a high standard and have been careful to allocate the coins wisely on tasks and utility that will add value to the project over time. Over the last 30 years, we've seen our national treasuries diminish and in some cases fully depleted. National governments have become increasingly reliant on debt to fund the burdens of the state and to fund the ever-growing expansion of government. So here's the thought experiment. Imagine a country or a business that could not hold debt or assets, where the balance was either positive or zero, but never negative, and where its value could only be assessed by its productivity. You would of course be imagining the world of the DAO, the Digital Autonomous Organization, where Decred is well and truly leading the way. The Decred in Depth podcast has also been extremely active with a number of new guests. Do you have a mental model for how high DCR can go in the next one to two years? The main catalyst for DCR going really high, and, let's, and we're talking about ceilings here, so maximum optimism. I think that there's a strong and growing narrative that Ethereum by use and by market cap metrics eventually can outperform Bitcoin as Ethereum's use cases, you know, uh, and I'm only talking about use cases, I'm not talking about any other fundamentals here, uh, as its use cases and its directly observable usage outpaces uh, that of Bitcoin, at least in a transactional, measurable transactional value aspect. So once Ethereum breaks the Bitcoin market cap ceiling. It's kind of open season for a bunch of other speculative competitors to do the same. And we both know that Decred has a lot of big, smart backers who are playing the long game with it, um, as well as small, smart backers who also understand its value prop and are playing the long game. Do you see any irony in an anti-tax film being funded by what is essentially a tax on the Decred protocol? I see a lot of irony in that statement. I'm anti-taxes in the way that they currently exist. But I also, like Benjamin Franklin and various others, recognise the inevitability of taxes. As I said to you before, there's never been a civilization without taxation of some kind. But there have been civilizations where taxation was voluntary. And that's a really 
important difference. The taxes we pay to Decred or to Bitcoin in terms of fees and so on, those are essentially voluntary taxes. If you want to use the system, you pay them the money, but you, you're, you're not... A, that it's, it's different from having your money taken from you at source and then you having very little say on how that money is spent, which is currently how social democracies run, run today. Um, you know, your only say on how that money is spent is, is your vote every five years, which is, uh, as we all know, fairly ineffective. Um, the decred governance system of voting is far more effective. What are your thoughts in regard to comparing Thor chain to the DCR DEX? Man, I feel like Thorchain and DCR DEX are very complementary because, um, like I mentioned earlier, for every single, almost for every single trade that happens on Thorchain, there's an arbitrage opportunity that gets presented. You know, the Thorchain uh, community are very much focused on decentralization, focused on native assets, focused on things like this. So let's just say if we want to put ourselves in the shoes of an arbitrager right now, if there are arbitrage opportunities on DoorChain, then one of the best places to go would be to the DEX because you don't have to wait for a centralized exchange to process your withdrawal. You don't have to uh, wait for you know that withdrawal to come. At least with the DCR DEX, you could perform an atomic swap right then and there, get that DCR and arbitrage it on Thorchain right away. So I feel like if uh, I feel like they are very much complementary, and I feel like the Thorchain integration, if it has a lot of volume, then it would generate additional users to the DCR DEX that are arbitragers on the Thorchain platform because they want to make sure that they could get their DC DCR or possibly sell that DCR um, in a very immediate manner. Decred's public relations professional, Lindsay McConaughey, has been busy securing and pitching media to various news sites about Decred. The news about Decred passing vote to make a consensus change to ticket revocations was covered by Bankless Times, Crowdfund Insider, and Geek Insider. Finder.com published the results of its cryptocurrency prediction survey featuring quotes from community member Jay-Z in an article about Bitcoin price prediction, Decred developer Radar was interviewed for Authority Magazine's The Futures Now series, talking about all things Decred and crypto, including privacy, governance, Decred being the first true crypto DAO, and Decred's use in Brazil's elections. An article in the street featuring commentary from Jake Yocampaya on how to buy crypto, Decred developer Luke BP was interviewed by Geek Insider's podcast, Geek Speak, covering all major aspects of Decred. Now let's take a look at the rest of the proposals on Politeia. Decred's proposal platform has seen a lot of new action lately, including proposals to change Decred's consensus rules, which are the underlying rules of the network, and larger proposals targeting marketing. The explicit version upgrades consensus change proposal passed with 99.9% .9 voter approval, with nearly 20,000 votes cast, reflecting a 47% voter turnout. This proposal will make modifications to Decred's transaction and scripting language version enforcement to reject all newer versions until a consensus vote explicitly enables a given version along with the fully defined semantics for it. The aim of the change is to streamline the consensus change deployment process so that future changes can be developed and rolled out more efficiently. This will make it much more difficult to deploy any changes to consensus rules via a soft fork. It also reduces the possibility of malicious actors taking advantage of users running old software. This proposal is essentially making the trade-off of removing soft forks as an upgrade path, with the advantage of generally better compatibility, easier development, security, and integration. Since Decred upgrades via on-chain governance voting via hard fork, there is no need for soft forks in order to upgrade. The total budget asked to create the code and write the Decred change proposal documentation is US$6,000 payable in Decred, and the work will be completed by core Decred developers from Company Zero. The Decred content and asset translation proposal, phase two, passed 97.3% voter approval, 19,573 votes are cast, reflecting a 46 voter turnout. This proposal renews ongoing work to translate Decred media and software into important languages such as Spanish, Chinese, Arabic, and Portuguese. Of the initial $33,000 budget requested, the original proposal made use of $14,690 worth of funds. The budget remains the same at $33,000 US dollars payable in Decred to last the remainder of 2021 or about seven months. The Twitter bot phase one proposal from CoinShuffle passed with 85.3% voter approval and a 46% voter turnout. This proposal asks for $2,240 US dollars payable in Decred for past work in creating a Twitter bot that reports statistics regarding Decred's stake shuffle privacy feature. CoinShuffle has released the code publicly on GitHub, 
Phase two will involve more metrics, including on-chain transaction volumes, total value staked, block reward reductions, total cost to attack, and project milestones. The automatic ticket revocations consensus change passed with 94.8% voter approval with a 51% voter turnout meaning nearly 21,000 votes were cast. This proposal requests a budget of 10,000 US dollars payable in Decred to produce suitable code and documentation to automate the staking ticket revocation process so users no longer need to revoke missed and expired tickets manually. It enables the recovery of funds for stakeholders who lost the redeem script for the legacy VSP system before the release of VSPD, which removed the need for the redeem script. This proposal is yet another example of Decred stakeholders voting to upgrade and improve the protocol, making the software experience better using on-chain governance. The Daylight Robbery Dominic Frisbee documentary proposal was rejected with an approval rate of 12.5%. 26,583 votes were cast, marking a massive 67% voter turnout. This proposal requested a budget of 295,000 US dollars, payable in Decred, to produce a documentary based on Dominic's book, Daylight Robbery, which goes over the past, present, and future of taxation. Decred was requested to be the sole sponsor and advertiser of this documentary, with the idea being Decred would benefit from the sponsorship and that it would make news being the first DAO-funded documentary publicly released with zero copyright. Dominic has stated the Decred DAO would be discussed in the future section of taxation, which deals with the virtual economy and digital nomads. The proposal was criticized for being too expensive, not having a clear distribution plan, and not being relevant enough to the Decred project in order to be financed. There were also plenty of positive comments, with users excited to see the era of the DAO ushered in, with a no-strings-attached documentary film going over taxation, something relevant to all humans that could potentially boost awareness of Decred. Ultimately, in the end, hard on-chain voting via the stakeholders had the final say. And as one user wrote on Twitter, shout out to proper governance instead of Twitter polls. We also had the Decred Become Storyteller proposal from filmmaker Anis Shelwit, which requested a budget of 400,000 US dollars to make a high-end science fiction miniseries of five three-minute episodes exploring Decred's core values and social functions. The proposal was quickly marked to be abandoned as the proposer wanted to rethink the proposal due to the initial negative comments not taking the proposal seriously. The Dubai Crypto Conference participation proposal from SZ1 is also under discussion. She says the Dubai Crypto Conference is a great opportunity for Decred to show its presence in the Middle East, as it has new crypto exchanges, is a tax-free jurisdiction, and will have many high net worth investors in attendance. There are various presentation packages offered that range from $5,000 for only a remote presentation, up to nearly $20,000 to have presentations in person, and to have Decred representatives physically at the event with Decred featured in event press releases. SC1 will have to choose which option stakeholders will vote for. Some stakeholders have commented they believe this would be a positive experience and good marketing opportunity, while others believe marketing events are not worth the investment. Thanks for watching this Decred news update. Be sure to check out Decred.org to learn more about the project. Decred is secure, adaptable, sustainable. Learn more at Decred.org.